Welcome to chapel today. We're very glad that you're with us. Uh, we're going to sing some old familiar songs today. Um, I, I, don't, I think you'll know all of them and um, we will enjoy singing those and reading some scripture that goes along with the songs. But I want to begin by reading Psalm 100. Shout triumphantly to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with celebration. Come before him with shouts of joy. Know, know that the Lord is God. He made us. We belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his own pasture. Enter his gates with thanks. Enter his courtyards with praise. Thank him. Bless his name. Because the Lord is good. His loyal love lasts forever. His faithfulness lasts generation after generation. Isn't that true? Some of us are here today because generations of our families have passed the faith on down to us as Timothy's grandmother and mother did for him. Well, let's sing uh, the first verse of Amazing Grace and then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. Well, because of his amazing grace, Jesus taught his disciples to pray uh, when they came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, these were people who had been praying all their lives, but they could tell there was something different in the way that Jesus prayed. And so he said to them, uh, when you pray, say, so let us uh, together uh, join in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, let's sing Amazing Grace, the first verse again, and then we'll sing when we've been there 10,000 years. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now to you about this when this cross appeared on our table and uh, I just thought I would tell you because you may not be able to see on the camera but it has a little sign on it on the front and it says amazing grace so I thought oh that is perfect for us since we sing amazing grace every week so you'll probably see this most every week from now on well today we're going to begin with another hymn that is very familiar to us and that is holy 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 um, this hymn is a, this is how you been, begin church song for me. Uh, just, it seems to me it's the, you know, just a proper hymn, but um, we sing it for lots of, on lots of occasions, as you know. Let's sing the first verse, and then I'll read some scripture for us. <laughs> Shall rise 
4 we read they do not rest day or night saying holy 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 Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come that's the good news he is to come you know uh, many years ago uh, my husband and I went to a conference for pastors and spouses and um, if you've never been in a, in a room that's just full of preachers and their spouses. Uh, you just haven't heard real singing because <laughs> it's just amazing. And so at one point, I don't remember a whole lot about the conference, but this stuck with me. At one point, uh, the song leader had us, we had sung Holy, 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 I think all the verses. And then he said, let's, let's be in an attitude of prayer and worship and let's sing this very slowly and rather softly. And I want, to, I want us to do that today as we sing it through the second time. Just concentrate on the words, and we'll sing it slowly enough that you can catch the words and the music together, okay? Let's sing. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall but that helps me to be more aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit with us. Our next hymn is How Firm a Foundation, and this is one of, <laughs> I know you're surprised that I'm going to say this, this is one of my favorite hymns. <laughs> I could fill a hymnal with my favorite hymns, couldn't I? Yeah. Uh, but this really is a great, great hymn, and I want to read from you from Isaiah chapter 41. This is uh, God speaking to his people. You are my servant. I chose you and didn't reject you. Don't be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you. I will hold you with my righteous, strong hand. And that's a good way for us to start. His righteous, strong hand uh, gives us a firm foundation. And then we'll look at something else. So let's sing that verse together. saying the way it is on the music you have, yeah. and that's fine. Uh, I hope that we are singing a lot of these songs from memory, so whenever you remember something that's not printed there, that's just fine. Uh, let me see. Isaiah 43 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, no, nor shall the flame scorch you. The rest of the verses in this hymn go on to use the 41st chapter of Isaiah as a starting point for the text for the, this hymn. So listen to these words. Fear not, I am with thee, O be not dismayed. For I am thy God and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand upheld by my righteous 
omnipotent hand. We read that about his righteous omnipotent hand in our first uh, scripture for this. And so the other one goes on to uh, read, When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee. I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. Isn't that wonderful? And the last verse says, The soul that on Jesus has leaned for repose, I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never No, never, no, never forsake. Oh, what grand words. Let's sing that first verse again, Bill. How firm a foundation ye saints of the Lord is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can we say than to is another great one about the foundation. I've got too many papers here, don't I? Get them out of the way. Um, and it is the church's one foundation. This was written by Samuel Johnson Stone in 1866. Um, he wrote the church's one foundation as one of 12 hymns based on the 12 articles of the Apostles' Creed. He hoped that these hymns would help people to better comprehend the creed, to understand it, that they, the one that they often recited but seldom understood. And that that is so true, isn't it? It has words in it that are old words and we don't use them. And one of them is that he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. It's not the fast and the dead. It's the living and the dead. Have you ever torn a fingernail down to the quick? That's the living part, okay? And so that's why, so that's what he was doing, was trying to teach people uh, the faith, as many of our hymns do. So let's sing How Firm a Foundation. No, the church is one foundation. (laughs) The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water. Corinthians 3 verse 11 we read for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid that foundation is Jesus Christ and then in Ephesians 2 we read so then you are no longer strangers and aliens but you are citizens with the saints he was talking to the Gentiles so he's talking to us so we are no longer strangers and aliens but are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Let's sing that one more time. And Bill, can we slow it down just a tad? Yes. Thank you. The same of, of one. Verse 1. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The church is one foundation. It's Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water.
grateful for that, that he died for us. Our next hymn is, Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. You remember the words of Jesus who said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So let's sing the first verse of Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take my cross and follow. Ernest Blandy, as I said, wrote this song, and he was a, a member of the Salvation Army, and uh, he evidently had a strong faith and worked that faith out in a ministry in his slum. He one time was given the opportunity to choose between two appointments with the Salvation Army. One was a large church in another town, and one was to a ministry in the slum called Hell's Kitchen. At that time, and it was in the 18, late 1800s, Hell's Kitchen was not a place you wanted to be. It was very rough and coarse and crude and uh, violent. And um, given the choice of those two assignments, uh, Mr. Bandy chose the one in Hell's Kitchen mm -hmm. because he felt that was where God was leading him. And he wrote this song, Where He Leads Me. I will follow. Let's sing that one more time. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take my cross and follow. sometimes God's call to us is to a place that we would not really have chosen. Sometimes it's uh, into rough situations or hard places. And so it, we need to remember the words of Jesus that we should take up our cross daily and follow him, even in the rough places. Let's sing this next song. It's a great cramp. Fanny Crosby hymn written in 1869. It's called Rescue the Perishing. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them from pity for sin and the grave. We poor and caring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Well, Fanny Crosby was one who also felt called. Uh, she wrote many, many hymns, thousands of hymns. But she also had her own personal ministries, and one of those was in a slum area of New York City and I, I honestly don't remember if it was Hell's Kitchen or not it might have been I don't know but it was a slum area and she um, 
felt called to spend time at a, what we used to call rescue missions. Remember a long time ago we called them that? And that's where this song, I guess, gets part of its words. But she would stand at the door. You remember that she was blind, but she would greet every person and shake hands with them as they came in to the rescue mission. And I think that's wonderful to know about. She, wasn't, she didn't spend all her time just in her comfortable study or wherever she wrote writing hymns. But she was out there living out her faith among people who needed to be rescued. Listen to the words of the hymn, and then we'll sing it one more time. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. When I read that, I think of Mother Teresa. Snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep over the erring one. Lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings lie buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving hand, wakened by kindness, cords that were broken will vibrate once more. Sometimes feelings that lie bur buried, are they are too overwhelming and they overwhelm us and we can't feel peace and joy and love. And so sometimes those feelings of shame and guilt and unworthiness um, keep us from living in the joy and peace and love of Christ. The last verse says, rescue the perishing. Duty demands it. Strength for your labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. You know, when I read that one, that reminds me that we all stray off the narrow way. And so we are all people who need to be rescued and brought back to the narrow way to walk more closely with Jesus. Let's sing that first verse one more time, a little bit slower, Bill. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Snatch them from pity for sin and the grave. We for the erring one, lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. And that's another Fanny Crosby hymn. She wrote this one in 1868. Luke 18 tells us the story of a blind man. And as Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard uh, a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by and then he shouted Jesus son of David have mercy on me those who were in the front sternly rebuked him and ordered him to be quiet but he shouted even more loudly son of David have mercy on me Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him and when he came near Jesus asked him what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people when they saw it, praised God. Let's sing, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble The second 
verse says, let me at your throne of mercy find a sweet relief. We all need that, don't we? A sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition, help my unbelief. Trusting only in your merit, would I seek your face. Heal my wounded, broken spirit. Save me by your grace. Be the spring of all my comfort, more than life to me. Not just here on earth beside me, but eternally. I love that last yeah, verse. Last line. Ah, that's, that's a wonderful that's one, isn't it? That's so wonderful. Yeah. Well, let's sing Pass Me Not one more time. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me What's next, Bill? I've lost my page. What's next? Softly and tenderly. Okay. I can't find in all this mess of papers. I can't find my order. So I, I trust that I have my hymns in order. I do. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. This hymn was written by Will Thompson. In Matthew 11, 28, and 29, we read these words of Jesus. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's sing that first verse of Softly and Tenderly. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you. When Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me. Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, pleading, calling, O oh, sinner, come home. Mm -hmm. And we're all sinners, so we all need to come home because we wander sometimes and we wake up in the desert and we have to go find our way back. Actually, all we have to do is ask Jesus and he'll lead us back. Isn't that right? Let's sing. We've only sung it once, correct? Okay, good. Softly and tenderly. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching. Watching for you and for me. Come home, come 
precious name or some uh, know it by take the name of Jesus with you precious name written in 1870 by Lydia Baxter so this one has been around for a long time as well let's sing that first verse precious name and then we'll talk a bit more take the name of Jesus with you child of sorrow and of Comfort give you. Take it then where you go. Precious name, oh, precious oh sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh, oh sweet, hope of earth and joy. In Philippians chapter 2, we read these familiar words. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and every tongue could, should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let's sing that. First verse again. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where you go. Precious name, oh my sweet, hope of earth and joy of Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of earth. The last verse of that hymn says, Oh, the precious name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy. When his loving arms receive us and his songs our tongues employ precious name precious name well we come to the end of our time together today and we are going to read or recite together the uh, 23rd psalm and so if you will either turn to it where you have it uh, written down or you will just join me in reciting it from memory let's let's say it together the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He storeth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, we always end by singing God be with you till we meet again. So will you join us now in singing together, God be with you. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels God uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you. Till we meet, till we meet.